Hello everyone and welcome back to Big Mouth and a very, very warm welcome to my review of Doctor Who Season 11, Episode 5. That is correct. I am not even going to attempt to pronounce the title. Good news next week, we actually have a title we can all read and pronounce. Yay! So let's talk about this week's episode of Doctor Who. First of all, here's a disclaimer. Let's face it, fellow Doctor Who fans. We have loved and seen so many wonderful things in the history of Doctor Who. But let's make one thing abundantly clear. The BBC are no longer making Doctor Who for Doctor Who fans. No, they have taken it away from us. They have proudly done that because they have hated us for years. They hated that we didn't watch Class. They hated that we didn't watch Talk for Miracle Day. They have hated us because we have not just, we didn't embrace the dumbing down of Doctor Who after Russell T Davies left and Stephen Moffat took over. But right now I'd welcome Stephen Moffat back with open arms because he, if he wasn't a, a particularly good showrunner, but what a fabulous writer with a great yeah, imagination. And that is a stark contrast to Chris Chibnall. Um, let's not forget, yes, he wrote a fantastic first season of Broadchurch. But let's not forget in season three, he told us any man who looks at a topless, a picture of a topless lady is a potential rapist. Always remember that. And never forget that this is a man who actually hates men. This is a man who's always writing social commentary about men. And it's not a flattering one either. So let's talk about this episode. I actually really enjoyed the first 20 minutes. I thought, wow, this makes up for last week. And a lot of what we've seen in this season previously. I, I was really enjoying the way the Doctor was acting erratically. And she even got a bit angry at times. But then when the guy told her off, she was like, sorry, yeah, you're right. Doctor, no, that's not who you are. Stop apologising for being the Doctor. And this is where it all began to get wrong. And so from minute 20, I totally lost any interest in anything that was going on. And going back to the guy who told her off, and I forgot his name. He was the only interesting guest character. Once he died, I just wasn't interested in what was going on. And yes, the pregnant guy. Now, normally in futuristic sci-fi, I'd say, that's quite cool, isn't it? I mean, he's been played by a good actor. He's a pregnant guy. Yeah, it's all right. But unfortunately, this is Chris Chibnall. And it's all about social commentary about men. Hey, look, men, why don't we show you what women go through? Ha, huh, how would you like it? There's, an, there's, a, there's a passive aggressiveness about it, and there lies the problem. So, but that was just May, wasn't it? That was just blah. That was just a shoulder shrug. That was just really a ball watching that guy lay there waiting to give birth. It wasn't interesting. Um, I suppose there was an interesting aspect to it, and it was the Ryan subplot. Finally realising, yeah, being a young dad is kind of difficult, and maybe... He would act the same way if he just found out he was about to have a kid because he's kind of been against his dad and his dad never being around for him um, as much as he should be. But um, so I'm interested in that. And I'm also interested in meeting Ryan's dad. I don't really know what they're. I mean, I think that there's the same. They, look, the same big to do with Ryan's dad, because they keep. I don't think it's just a subplot to kind of make Ryan interesting. That would kind of be difficult. Um, let's be honest about it, but I think Ryan keeps on mentioning him, and I think I think Chibnall's up to something there, and maybe we'll see what's going on in the finale. Maybe he is the big villain of the series. I don't know. Um, we've also seen every villain from every, all these episodes get away. So is there a big villain team up at the end of this season? Is this season actually leading to anything? Because let me tell you something. Um, from the outside looking in, there are no arcs. We were told there were no arcs, and that's actually been one of the big failures of this season. Without a story arc in a season, whether it's Doctor Who or, you know, 24 or any of the of these big shows, I mean, 24 isn't on anymore, but I'm just giving you an example. Um, if these series don't have an arc, there is no interest there because all you have are episodes that finish and then the next one. And 
it's like they never did what they did in the previous episode. They don't even talk about it. So what happens is nothing's continued. Nothing, you know, there's no strands. And it's just boring. Now, this is even a bigger problem when the standalone episodes are not very interesting. And that's the problem with season 11 of Doctor Who. It's just not very interesting. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's just, oh, well, on to the next episode. So who is Doctor Who being made for now? The mainstream audience, the LBGT community. Um, Basically, it's being made for people who are basically watching it Basically, let me imagine, you've got a kid, hates greens, so you force feed the kids greens and then you put a gun to its head and you go, now I want you to say how yummy that was. So this is what the New Age Doctor Who audience is. It's people watching something that's not particularly great or entertaining, but they're saying they're loving it every week. I actually saw a YouTube one here talking about Doctor Who. Firstly, she was pretending to be a lesbian, which is outrageous. She'd put little red bits in her hair, and she was such a fake. And even the review was so fake. It was so despicable, so disgusting. So I did a research on her, and I actually found out she was a fraud. And these are the type of people perpetuating the lie, perpetuating the lie that Chris Chimnall's Doctor Who era is the best ever, which, first of all, is outrageous and an insult to the wonderful things for four or five years that Russell T. Davis gave to us. Because since that man left, it's been an incredible shit show. But at least Moffat's shit show tried and sometimes was kind of interesting and even exciting. I liked his story arcs. I really did. Especially the River Song one. Especially finally, can anyone tell me when we watched A Good Man Goes to War, if we wasn't excited to finally find out who River Song was, even though most of us seem to already know what she was because everyone was bloody spoiling it on Twitter. But besides that, they were exciting times. This is just not exciting. Now, the villain, who wasn't a villain. I've noticed now if a villain's a creature, they go out of their way to tell us this person, this, this thing, this creature isn't so bad. It's just trying to survive. And you know what? Why are you giving us these creatures if they're just trying to... It's boring. You need something to kind of... You need a kind of opposition to the Doctor. What happened to the evil geniuses we used to see in Classic Who? What's going... There's nothing here. It's an empty shell. We haven't had one good villain. Listen, we've had one extraordinary, exceptional, unique episode, which will probably win awards as well, which will probably mask the fact of this being a such an ordinary dull season. But because Rosa is going to win so many awards, right, we're all going to have to sit there while people say, you see, Chris Chibnall's here are brilliant. You know, no one else has made an episode like this. Well, maybe no one else has ever made an episode like Rosa, but no one else has ever made a series of Doctor Who that's so dull and uninteresting. We have free companions We have Graham, who's half interesting. I wouldn't say he's any more than that. And then you've got the other two, who are, again, May. They're just a shoulder shrug. They're not particularly interesting. And why are they actually there? Again this week, Yaz was on the subs bench. Mr Chibnall, what's your problem with this character? Don't you know what to do with her? I think from the very offset, he just created her. And they said, nah, I just don't know with this one. I'll sod it. Well... We'll cast someone from Hollyoaks so we can get some of the teens to watch it. That'd be that. They've done nothing with her, basically. At least Ryan's got a little something. And I think it's very interesting that Graham keep on, keeps on trying to fist bump him and Ryan keeps on refusing. So maybe when we find out that Graham's dying of cancer, which I'm assuming is going to happen, then we're going to have this corny thing where Ryan, just before Graham dies finally fist bumps him. I think that's where we're heading with this. Graham is not long for this world. It's as simple as that. Um, We've had kind of all the hints and everything, basically by Graham saying in the very first episode that he's a cancer survivor. And I think that was very important um, when we found that out. And as I say, I don't think Bradley Walsh will be back for another season, but we don't even know if this doctor will be back for another season. You would say yes. With rumours of 18 months gap 
till the next season. That's curious and that's interesting. Hey, will Chris Chibnall even be running the next season? And, you know, I keep on hearing about this fictional kind of phantom five-year plan, which I've never seen anyone official talk about it, but Doctor Who fans always say it's official, even if there's a five-year plan. You know, that doesn't matter. Now, thankfully, the ratings have been kind of good, which guarantees at least another season. But if you anyone could set out a five-year plan, but if nobody's watching your show, that that five-year plan might as well be a bit of paper from the Harry Potter franchise that just vanishes into ashes, you know. So five years plan, anyone who knows anything about how television is done and the rating system, if people wasn't watching it, which thankfully they are, that five-year plan would not matter. But this is an episode that basically doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. You know, when that, you know, uh, from, when Tess from Casualty died, and you know they're all standing there and honouring her and all that, and I'm just thinking, I didn't care. I didn't care about her. I didn't feel the gravitas of the character. I didn't feel what she'd achieved. Just because the Doctor said, oh, you're blah, 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 and you're in this book. Wow. But that's not enough to impress me or any member of the audience. So we didn't care about her. Um, we didn't care about her brother. Um, we didn't care about any of them. Like like that kind of doctor medical type of female who was kind of not very confident. He really believed in me, but I didn't believe in myself. I don't care. I don't know you. You're not giving me anything. You're, you haven't got any personality to make me care about you. And this is the problem with the guest starring characters this season of Doctor Who. No efforts actually being made with them to actually be any good, to be interesting for us to care about. And if the fundamental thing about characters is that whether they're bad or good, that we actually care about them. Ultimately, nothing really worked. It, nothing, it was just there. It was just another 50 minutes of TV. And I don't know, I don't know, listen, we know. Look, any Doctor Who fan knows the truth that this show has been taken away from us in a very fundamental way in what they've done before we even saw an episode and what they're doing now. Now, I don't really want to argue with people. I respect everyone's opinion. If you love what's going on with this, that's great. Good for you. I'm happy for you. I will carry on watching this. And in fact, the descriptions for the next few episodes that thankfully Chibnall isn't writing look kind of interesting. But we shall see. I will judge this season completely. I will judge this Doctor completely when I've seen everything. Because right now, I haven't seen anything that tells me I should be calling this the best thing ever. Because it's not. It's not what I enjoyed. It's not why I became a Doctor Who fan for. Um, it's just something that's going through the motions. And as I say, without no story arc, it's just an empty shell. And that is what we've had so far. So everyone, like and subscribe. Um, tell me what you think. And if you didn't like the video, dislike. Just get involved. Please share my YouTube channel. Tell everyone where I am. Let's be mates and let's talk about geek culture. Because it's fun, right?